Welcome to one of the Cambridge Service Alliance uh, series broadcasts, uh, webinars here today. Um, we will talk about moving towards the data driven business model, a case study from one of the online newspaper publishing industry. It's called NetaVision. Um, I'm just going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Mohammed Zaki. Um, I'm a leading research here in Cambridge Service Alliance. Uh, I'm leading the big data research. This is one of our uh, recent case studies that recently we published as one of the monthly papers. You can find that as well in our website as well. Um, just a quick introduction about the topic that we are um, discussing today is we looking at the rise of the new digital media platforms. Um, which is comes through, there are some power shifts to the consumers who can program their own content using technology or simple interfaces or even the, um, the new tablets and mobile technology as well. Um, this creation moves a little bit as well from the hands of the legacy publishers um, into the hands of the communities, which is now could be interpreted into bloggers, um, or any uh, any person who would like to to discuss something over the internet. So there are there are a problem here is actually um, media companies are lack from the competitions of harnessing the the data that comes from the internet or the digital platform itself, and this is really the essence that we want to talk today. So that that comes up to the conclusion that digital media is quite is quite highly dynamic which means you've got front runners face a present a persistent need for explorations whereas uh, legacy print domains face a presented need for exploitation and here in that case study we would like to highlight the the current strategy that new startups or online digital media try to survive in such unforgiving markets and how actually they're going to compete against the large publishing firms and actually the new media players like Facebook and Google, etc. And also here we're going to look at what we call the data-driven business models, actually how they're going to leverage that big data, what kind of challenges they as well facing. Um, also thinking about the ambitious strategy here, the thing that I was just explaining, the explorations and the exploitation, and where are the opportunities for business model as well. If I am um, if I'm thinking about the the the, the fact about normal any normal website um, or media normally rely on one of the business model which is the advertisement business model. So how just a, just a quick uh, recap. So this is a nice graph, not from us, but actually comes from VentureBeat, uh, just to explain the flow. Um, and the process that happening underneath any website and mobile advertisement model. So you can see there are a, a nice step, uh, a nice process here. The mobile users can visit the website or using his app uh, through a specific website. And our concept here, it's a media, so it's a new platform. Um, the site or app send the request to an ad exchange. The ad exchange starting to develop some real-time option um, these auctions starting to begin. There are some network bids around this ad. It could it, the ad exit change to link the highest bid, and send the winning and uh, send the sends to the winning is a winning ad basically. Um, then the users can see the winning. So now it's in the hand of the users. Either he can use it or he interested in it. So there are three process. Either ignore it pay attention to it or engage with it. There are some verification tools as well for the user for fraud, some attribution to the cloud to measure the attention, engagements, and this is, could be recorded through the data analytics. And um, this, is, this is how the process could go all the way within the record that, organi that users using this app or using this web page to get a lot of click streams. But this is this is just to show you how the process of any advertisement happening in any digital media website or in any app that connected to any digital website. So in our case, in our case, uh, we talk here about 
uh, one of these Norwegian websites uh, or media websites is called Native Reasons, which is a case study we, we produced um, recently, talks about how they uh, using the data, basically an updated driven business model within their organization. Um, so the firm aims here to stop the data leakage, that what we call it, and use more a competitive strategy to help them to explore more data-driven business model opportunities. Uh, this could create to understand a cross-platform audience uh, who is communicating with them, who are using the advertisements, and etc. And hopefully that could link them to understand and create a powerful data journalism stories, um, streamline business process, and then define new solutions and services as well for the customers itself. Um, just to give you a little bit background about the company itself and um, a history, you know, where they started, how also the current business model being, you know, moved to a new data-driven business model. So just to give you, it's a Norwegian web uh, newspaper, uh, was established in Norway in late 1996 as a purely online startup, competing against the, the, the large publisher, basically, that is currently in, the, in that world. But let's, let's focus about Norway, for example. But over the past 20 years, uh, Native Reasons uh, has been able to increase its market share and profitability. And the, the key for this is actually they were looking about highly disruptive business models. And these disruptive business models that give them the competition angle and try to compete against these big houses. And you can see the nice niche here is they were one of the, the front runners or the first people who starting about this digital news and um, digital online media. But in the early days of this online explorations, also legacy news firm felt that their brand is so strongly established, so they could experiment with new digital platform at their own space. But actually, Nitavism proved them wrong because basically they are quite more resilient and um, quite small for start, and especially you know at some points the dot um, uh, the, the dot the dot com bubble happened as well. So if if I put some context about the this is it's just a general uh, introduction, but in late 1990s, Swedish web portal called Spray acquired Nitavism. Um, between 2000 and 2001, the firm changed the hands again, and in, the, in this time went to a German division or a web portal called Likos, which is one of the first profitable internet business at that time in the world. Um, then you can see in 2000, between 2002 and 2007, there were acquisitions by um, a, a broadcasting company called TV2. Um, and TV2 at that time, their ambition, their ambition was to become the leading online site uh, and saw some strategic value of integrating and acquiring Native Reason as a brand because they were doing very well in terms of the media online at that time. But the problem is they, 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 had, the, they had as well at the same time one of their um, uh, brands called TV2 Interactive, um, which is which is had failed to generate some uh, online traffic, basically, and revenues from it. But like I said, the dot com collapse and get some heavy dent um, in this plan. That's why they've been focusing about um, by the 2007. They would like to rebrand themselves as TV2 Native Reasons, not TV2. Um, um, uh, uh, not TV2 Interactive. Um, so TV2 Interviewing was operationals, um, it was investments, they put a lot of investment in this to get some online markets, but there were a couple of problems, especially the, the geographical locations between the different branches was um, quite far away from each other. Um, and also some some practicalities between the um, um, the managing the resources between the two offices. But actually, it's been split off. Uh, Native has been split off and become a pure startup in its own. Um, and that was really good for them because they had their own kind of visions. And basically, they acquire 
in 2013, a blogger community or a blogger platform is called blog.no. And by using all these data that comes from the blogs, by using all the data that comes from the, the platforms that are generating from the news, they started to think and capitalize on the big data that they have and try to target more advertisement that is uh, relevant to this, their customers or the readers that they have. Um, so the basic current business model traditionally for native agents always about display ad based. Um, the firm using the free concerns about cannibalizing between existing business and focus only on attracting many people as possible in their websites. So they don't have that pressure of the established organization um, that they should cannibalize between what they have as a printed versions and what they have as an online version. So they've been constant to try to explore. The, the, the key differentiation here is they try, the, the established newspaper try to balance between the two and the protection of a printed newspaper, but actually that, 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 wasn't, that was a competitive advantage for native visa in itself. Um, so also there is no any legacy to protect. Uh, they can publish whatever they want. They can publish the news as it happens. So there are real-time factors. The, that could struggle with established news as well, which is, could be managed by publishers who had think about, well, we can use this news for tomorrow, for example. Also, the acquisitions for the blogger platform seem, seem to work with them because that could add to the portfolio of website. If there are bloggers who's quite famous and has been following by a lot of visitors, that could add a lot of value to the, to the websites and increase the traffic, and a lot of advertisement could go through. Um, so that's, that's create a new vertical for them. Verticals here could be sport, could be cosmetic. So think about a singer who talks about her recent um, 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 uh, cosmetic products or something, you know, that she's used recently in one of her um, uh, one of her party, for example. So that that makes a lot of bloggers who uh, ha uh, that makes a lot of um, uh, fans basically that follow this uh, blog artist that could could uh, you could advertise and target some ads to this page and basically there are opportunity that these customers can. Uh, link to the, the, the main product. So they use the network of these thousands of programs to understand the highly commercial blending editorial content within their website, if you would like to say. Um, if I would like to move between the, 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 the data-driven business model, this is a nice blueprint which is, comes from a series um, of webinars. We've been talking about that kind of blueprint that we used with a couple of case studies to just ident to identify you know, how the data could be played here and drive some revenue streams um, based on some analytics capabilities. So the, the big data online platform could be seen as an important business opportunities, and that comes from a lot of cases that we've been talking and a lot of papers we published recently in the, in the website. But in terms of native visa in itself, it looks like they've been pushing the boundaries of the online explorations by untangling all this ambidexterity dilemma that we've been talking exploration, exploitation. And they're using the big data analytics here to help them to, to tackle that. And if you think about any boundaries between the concept of exploitations and the exploration that could define any ambidexterity strategy, that could compo compose to five distinct interrelated dimensions. It could be one element about the technology, one element about the market itself, which is the media here, the product that you are producing, the resources that you are using, processes, and also the business model that underlying this. So, uh, so here, if you think about that blueprint, so what when, when this organization tried to get as a data-driven business model, it looks like the firm would like to use analytic capabilities to help the editorial decision making to improve the, the advertisement experience and also the user experience when he sees some, uh, some contents. If you think about the, the offer here, which is the data, it could be a personalized content and creation to the users, especially that the firm are collecting a lot of data, especially internally, externally. So if you think about the blogging, the blogging, social media as well, that's an external data. 
um, uh, internal data through all the existing database, click streams that comes from the websites, mobile data as well for the people that access from it. If I put some facts on this, um, so the firm had access to at least 5 million unique visitors to its websites. And this is a statistics from 2014 uh, recently. So uh, of those 5 million, you've got 2.2 million come from mobile devices, which is the tablets and the, 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 the handheld mobile device itself. Um, you've got like 1.3 million total unique visitors, um, and also on total, uh, in total, in total, you've got a lot of record from collections of unstructured as well data that come with it, which could could be like video, it could be audios and photos as well. Um, so, with using all this kind of data that comes from internal and externally, you can have an, a, an offer for the data, which is the personal contents information, which is you can get some sentiment analytics toward that, and also um, knowledge, which is you understand more about the advertisement profile and basically could help the advertiser to target better customers. In, term, in terms of activities, you get you have a you have a list of chains of activities all the way from the data acquisition. Uh, you acquire this data, merge them, you, you try to come up with real-time analytics here, come up with some dashboards and come up with predictive analytics. But you can you can tell that Nativism newsroom is centered about the front page itself in the online website, which is attract most of the readers anyway and direct traffic to the rest of the website. So make a near real-time decision that could help uh, the editorials to understand where they can put best the, the, the news uh, which more attracted more customers and where they can relate that to more advertisements based on the user behavior over the different uh, streams that comes from the mobile and the website itself. Um, the revenue model, you can see it's still advertising revenue model. It's constantly, um, it's do, they're doing well in that world of the data analytics as well because they are one of the top three online news sites in Norway. Um, which is get a profit around 8.5 million um, 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 current rates, current, current um, uh, uh, currency of the Norwegian, which is an OK. But within this as well, that, like what we advise normally, there are normally an issues around any data-driven business models. And in that case was the personnel issues, which is related to the heavy ter constant turnover of personnel, because you know employees love as well to work with them. But the problem is they got all the digital and online uh, kind of experience and how to spend on then they go to more established organization, legacy new firms. Um, it, it's, all, it, it's always good to do that, but then they face the problems because basically it's good to have them, they've been, they've been saying that the personnel or the employees love to be there because they got all the freedom to do whatever they want, but then they would like, and, and they would like to move to a legacy or more established organization. There are collaboration issues, especially between themselves and the blogging community. Um, you can see... Um, Bloggers as well have their own agenda and mixing that with the startup itself or with the organization itself is not going sometimes not well. There are a couple of data practicality issues, especially linking all these different data that we are talking about, the blogging data, the existing internal data, the website data, the mobile data. So all these different online data, putting them in real time context, it's, it's quite tricky. Then the unstructured data that comes from it as well, that's another further complicating. Understanding customer need and behavior from different devices as well, um, that, 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 that's an, as well not, not straightforward kind of process. Uh, putting as well some financial resource issues here, which is uh, the, the problem is about this old technology needs some investments and huge investments on this. Um, putting them as a startup or an online startup, uh, they don't have all this capability to push that forward. That's why the investment is quite important. Um, then the competition issues as well, you know, still they are quite small compared to a, leg uh, a legacy firm. Um, or as well, you know, compared to Facebook or Twitter or the social media companies, which actually uh, quite um, fast enough in terms of the technology perspective.